Hello and welcome back to Big Bad Bard Plays Enter the Gungeon. So, I still need to unlock the Gunslinger, which means I gotta do a Paradox run. Um, I don't have, you know, a crazy amount of hegemony credits, so eventually, well, I'm probably still going to be getting more than five per run. Uh, we're gonna get that for sure on this run. Um... What do we need for this? Yeah, okay. Um, we need a bunch of... I think it's just a bunch of money and keys. I don't know if I'm going to go for that right now. Uh, rail gun I could afford. Microtransaction gun I cannot. Platinum bullets is 200? Really? That seems excessive. Um, so maybe I'll... Maybe I'll just hold on to my money for right now. Um, oh boy, I know it's been a minute since I recorded a video last, and I actually have an excuse for that this time. Hold on, let me see what we got. The Trank Gun, huh? And then the Rogue Special, and then, uh, is that Zombie Bullets? Okay. And the Trank Gun... Okay. It's not the... I, I was thinking it might be the Predator Gun, but I don't think that it is. Um, so I guess I'll just use the Rogue Special for right now. Um, but yeah, I actually have a reason for not having recorded, and that is that I was on vacation for, for a week. Uh, Danielle and I went out to Vegas, um, did some scouting while we were out there, because uh, we are very interested in moving to the city. Uh, and then, um... We spent a couple of days kind of looking around, and then, uh, and then we started the fun vacation uh, once our family got into town. And um, oh boy, what all did we do? We ate a lot of really good food. Um, we saw Mystere by Cirque du Soleil, and that was weird. <laughs> I I enjoyed the weirdness of it for sure. It was very strange. Um, and then uh, we also caught uh, Golden Knights preseason game while we were out there. The home opener was like the day after we left, so that kind of sucked. But um, we we got to catch a game while we were out there, and that was a lot of fun. And it was a big energy game. They were playing the Sharks, who are really like the closest thing they have to a rival team at this point, which is awesome. Uh, you know, just having having that level of competition, I guess, this early into the life of the team. So, I don't know, it was a lot of fun, very high energy. Uh, the people around us were having a great time, we were having a great time. The Knights beat up on the Sharks. And uh, this was... <laughs> this was an interesting game from the sense that there were 114 penalty minutes served in that game, uh, including, I believe, Evander Kane had like 26 or so, 26, 27, something like that, penalty minutes against him, um, and one of those penalties resulted in a three-game suspension, which is pretty amusing, but yeah, Kane ended up getting like tackled by one of the refs, which was awesome. Um, oh, I want that, probably. Uh, he also got into a fight with Valentin Zikov, uh, which it was, I don't think it was, uh, he's definitely a new player. I don't think it was his first NHL game, though. No, 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 he played a couple games last season with the Knights, for sure. Um, but it was definitely his first fight in the NHL. And so Kane going after a guy like that, it was a pretty low move. Um, we don't really want any of that. And he still, like, couldn't beat up on him. It was embarrassing for Evander. Let's just say that. Um, but then he just kept being a dick the whole game and kept getting into trouble. Uh, I mean, God, he spent more time in the box than on the ice. That's for sure. Um, Reeves came back. Uh, he had been missing from the first several 
preseason games, uh, but he came back for that game. Uh, so that was good. He had gotten injured, they said, in off-ice training, whatever that means. Um, but yeah, he came back, he looked awesome out there, played great. Uh, score ended up being like 5-1, to one, I think, with the, the Knights winning. The, uh, oh my god, the couple that was sitting right behind us at T-Mobile, uh, it was a split house. The husband, Golden Knights fan, the wife, Sharks fan, and the, the more the Sharks were losing, the more trouble this husband got in. Now, he wasn't doing anything to help himself not make his wife mad. Uh, he was doing things like cheering, and then she would chide him saying, stop cheering, you're, you know, you're getting everyone else riled up, and now they're cheering. And in the middle of her trying to ask him to stop, he would start cheering right in her face. And uh, you could say it was super disrespectful, because it, it was, but it was also really, really funny. So you can only get so mad at the guy. It was like, I wouldn't do that to my wife, but I think my wife also has the sense to not root for the sharks, so, you know. Uh, yeah. Then, anyways, um, oh boy. They've played a couple of games since then. I I got back from Vegas and went straight to work. So, um, so I really haven't had a day off yet, and haven't really had the chance to record, so they've played a couple of games since then, actually. We saw the last preseason game, that was against the Sharks. The home opener was also against the Sharks. And then the game after that was also against the Sharks. Uh, the home opener, uh, pretty physical game, but not nearly as many penalties. Um, it, it, there weren't really like any fights or scuffles that broke out. Uh, definitely not compared to the preseason, which we were a little surprised by. We figured they would wait until the actual season started before they, you know, started scrapping the way they did. Um, and then the home, or, yeah, and then the season opener, like, they didn't really get into all that much. Um, you know, there were, like, some slashing penalties, probably a hooking penalty or two. But no roughing, no fighting, no... Uh, I don't, you know, I don't think any game misconducts were handed out, nothing like that. Uh, final score, 4-1, to one, Golden Knights leading. Um, you know, it's a great start to the season for them. Uh, Cody Glass, new forward for the Golden Knights, uh, was playing between Mark Stone and Max Pacioretty. Scored his first NHL goal in his first NHL game. Uh, so that's awesome for him. He's going to remember that for the rest of his career. Um, you know, as having that moment playing as a Golden Knight. So that's pretty cool for him, I think. Um, especially because he's a young guy. He could end up being with the team for a very long time. And he looked good out there. He looked awesome. Uh, a lot of, like, the, the teamwork that the Golden Knights exhibited in this first game of the season was incredible. There were two awesome goals by Riley Smith, both of them set up beautifully by William Carlson, where it was just the perfect pass. Right to his teammate, right in front of the goal. Um, going cross crease on Martin Jones, so he really didn't even have a chance on either of them. And the second one was even better, because Smith passed it over to Carlson. Carlson, I guess, saw that Jones was maybe going to block it. Uh, he, he at least got over to that side of the net. And Carlson, without any hesitation, just taps the puck back over to, to Riley Smith, who just taps it in right behind the goalie. It was, it was amazing. It was beautiful. I don't know why I'm holding on to this spice. I should probably just pop that, right? Um, and then, last night happened. Uh, they played their second game against the Sharks, this time in San Jose. And boy, oh boy, uh, I haven't actually watched the game yet. I've seen some clips, I saw some highlights, I looked at the score. 
final score was 5-1, to one, Golden Knights. So that's amazing. Uh, really good start to the season now. Oh, that was unfortunate. Uh, really good start to the season. And something happened. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is what we're doing here today, huh? Uh, something happened right at the end of the game. Uh, it was basically when the Sharks scored their one goal. Instead of just, you know, doing a normal thing like a goal celebration, uh, you know, a little fist pump or something. Oh, that dude hangs out in the in the breach, doesn't he? He uh, sells you stuff. I think his name's Doug. Okay, that's nice. Good to know about that. Uh, anyways, um, instead of doing a goal celebration, one of the sharks decided to just, like, cross-check someone right in the back. Uh, and that started... That started a little scuffle. Um, that resulted in five ten-minute game misconduct penalties. Um, I think it was, like, two on one team and three on the other, but I'm, I'm not really sure at this point. I, like I said, I, I've only watched, you know, a couple clips. Um, oh, that's my last note. That's awesome. Let me see what this is. I, I bet Celeste was right. It's probably the exact same as the last file. Let me see. All right, so we've got down, up, right, left, left, right. Yep, there it is. Yep, it's the exact same one. I could have... I could have done it. Okay. Good to know. Uh, secret room is not gonna be that way. Could be here? I don't think that's it. Could be there. No, I don't think that's it either. Is it this? Why is the crack, like... I think that's just bullet holes in the wall, right? If I did that, like, right here, it would... No? Not look the same. Are you a secret room? I don't think so. Um, anyways, yeah. Golden Knights Hockey. Woo! I've been, I've been waiting many months for this. <laughs> and it's just amazing that the first couple of games were against the Sharks. Um, especially just because, and to think of, like, the last season ended with them playing, well, I mean, the, the postseason, the playoffs ended with them playing each other. Well, the, it ended for the Golden Knights with them playing each other. Um, but yeah, just started off with some really good, high-energy games. That's what I was ready for. And then I think the next game they play isn't until, like, Tuesday or something. Ugh, so I have to wait so long for another one. That's the worst part. And I think they're playing... Boston, maybe? I'd have to look at that schedule. I don't remember. I think Boston, maybe. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully, and I haven't been paying attention to any of the Boston games, um, but hopefully they're kind of reeling from their Stanley Cup loss. Still. <laughs> um, I don't know. What, else, what other hockey games have I been paying attention to a little bit? Uh, the, the Devils played... Philadelphia? The Devils played someone. I think it was Philadelphia. Uh, shit. Now I'm, I'm losing it. I'm tired. Um, I really don't feel like I've slept a solid night since we've gotten back from Vegas. Uh, but anyways, the, the Devils played last night. And... Did okay, they ended up losing in a shootout, but the reason that I was even paying any sort of attention to was uh, that they picked up a few players in the offseason that I'm actually, you know, uh, respectful of, like, very respectful of. They got Nikita Gusev from the Golden Knights. He was a player that a lot of Golden Knights fans were hoping they would find room in the salary cap for. And unfortunately, they just couldn't make it happen. Uh, they traded him over to Jersey for, like, some draft picks, basically. Um, so, really, Jersey came out on top of it. Um, but he ended up scoring the opening goal last night. They also picked up Wayne Simmons from Philadelphia. 
and uh, they, they got PK Subban from Nashville. Um, and PK is a player I've had a lot of respect for until he started kind of acting like a little bitch this last season, I felt. Um, just a few incidents that, I don't know, it, it didn't make him look good. Um, but Jersey's a team that I've liked in the past. And for them to pick up these players that I've historically... Well, okay, Gusev, I... I got the Golden Knights connection with him, that's about it. Um, the other two, like, I've historically respected them as players. And, uh, really just want to see them do well. Oh, hey, got that completed. That's nice. Um... So for them to be on a team that is looking pretty decent... Oh, and they, they were a part of the scoring for Jersey last night, so that was uh, what I was trying to point out, was those three players. They they just started with the team, but they all seem to be fitting in nicely, which is not always the case. <laughs> you don't very often get immediate chemistry um, with players you've never played with before. Oh, this looks... This is perfect, right? Look, this is going to be a secret room. I could show you right there. And we've got the Blank Shrine. Two and one right there. Beautiful. Um, I've been getting pretty lucky with Mimics. Uh, or with chests being Mimics, so that's nice. I've been able to save up these keys. Um, I've not been counting my spice intake. Okay, so I'm at the point where I'm losing health. That's at least important to know. Is that going to stop me from taking spice? You know, it probably should. Um, just for the simple fact that I'm actually trying to get all the way to bullet hell and fight the lich so that I can unlock the gunslinger and do it all over. Um, but, gosh, spice is just so alluring. You have to. It compels me. Okay, I think that's all the hockey news I've got. Um, oh boy, Danielle and I had a fantastic time in Vegas. Uh, we went to a couple museums, we saw the Neon Museum, that was, it was kind of cool. Um, it was hot, and it was just kind of like out in the sun. Uh, but they gave us little parasols to shield ourselves from the sun with, so that was cool. Um, and then they also had, so they had, uh, like a couple of volunteers that were... I assume they were volunteers. I, I assume these guys weren't getting paid. Um, they had a couple volunteers that would, like, explain some of the history of a couple of the signs. Uh, and that was interesting, but then they also had a web page that you could go to uh, and do a self-guided tour through it. And that was kind of neat. Um, so we actually ended up going through twice, because it was a browse-at-your-own-pace type deal. Um... So we went through once with her family members, um, and then they were kind of done, and uh, that's when we were talking to the volunteer. I assume this key is probably in the boss. Um, but then we went through again with the self-guided webpage tour. Uh, and it, it gave a little more information. Uh, it talked about way more of the signs than the volunteer did. Um, so that was nice, and he talked about some of the signs that weren't talked about in the self-guided tour, because it only picked up about 25, I think, uh, of the signs that were in this neon graveyard, essentially. Uh, so that was kind of neat. But then, I'd say the real treat of our vacation, at, at least in terms of our museum visits, or uh, besides the Golden Knights game, for sure, um, one of my favorite things that we did was we went to the Atomic, the National Atomic Testing Museum. And we ran into a guy that was not at all ready for us. He did not see us coming that day. Also, where the hell is the key? What? Because, like, I even found the secret room. Where the hell is the key for this? Huh? This has never happened to me before. I found the secret room. It's 
not anywhere on the map that I can see. What? Because I thought it would, like, show up like a... You know, like, like, uh, the, the chest does, I guess. Huh? It's not in this room, right? No. I am very, very confused. Very, very lost. Um, huh. That's strange. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> I guess while I'm looking for this key, and it may not even exist, uh, I can talk to you about Mike at the National Atomic Testing Museum. Uh, so, Danielle and I went, it was a Thursday afternoon, maybe like 1 o'clock in the afternoon, right? It was us and like a school field trip and then mm, a couple other spatterings of adults, but they could have very well just been with the school trip, I'm not really sure. Um, and so we're, we're not sure if Mike maybe thought we were part of the school trip, um, but after talking to us for a couple minutes, I'm sure it became very obvious that we were separate from them. Um, so while in Nevada, Danielle and I decided to sample some local goods, and we had some, uh, some fun gummy treats. Uh, and we decided to take a couple of those fun gummy treats right before going inside. And... Aw, oh, bummer. No, um... No extra chest right there. Um, so yeah, we were having a pretty good time uh, by the time Mike decided he was going to come over and talk to us. And he was really nice. He was a super nice guy. Uh... Older, probably in his late 60s or 70s. Could have been even older than that. I don't see this key anywhere. It's not in here, right? I don't see it. Alright, I assume it's just not anywhere then. Weird. Um, really nice guy, this Mike, right? Uh, and he came up to us and asked if we were from, from Nevada. No, we're from Indiana. We're from Indianapolis. He said, oh, I like to tell Nevadans about this ship, and he points behind him to a model ship of the USS Nevada. Oh, I kind of want Daruma. I kind of want Daruma. Oh, but I also want the Nod Key. Oh, I can get both. Hold up. Let me pop that. Let me grab that. Let me... Oh, I need some more money, though. I can grab both, though. That's... Oh, do I want to fight the rat like this? I am not in any sort of position to fight the rat right now, I guess, is what I'm realizing. Um, I'm also realizing I'm not getting any guns because I've taken so much spice. Eesh. Uh, anyways, uh, so Mike starts telling us the story about the USS Nevada, and it goes from like, god, I don't even remember where it starts. Uh, it might have started... I think it started with Pearl Harbor. It was at Pearl Harbor, right? And it's got... I I'm going to give you a very abbreviated story, or version of the story. Um, basically just to highlight one section. Uh, it's at Pearl Harbor. Oh, hey, wow, that was very close. I'm glad I doubled back there. Uh, it's at Pearl Harbor when the Japanese attacked. And uh, it ended up... You know, it's got these huge anti-aircraft guns on the back, so it actually ended up taking down a couple of Japanese uh, bombers. Bombers? I don't know. It ended up taking down a couple of the Japanese planes. Um, and somehow, among the... Uh, among the carnage, I guess, on the deck of the ship, uh, one of the torsos from a Japanese pilot landed on the ship, and the way he explained it to us was that the head blew off, and the legs had been blown off. So, I looked at Mike, right in his face, and I put my arms out to the side, and I waggled them a little bit, and I said, did he still have his arms? And Mike looked at me like that was the first time he had ever been asked that question. And he said, you know, quite frankly, it didn't say anything about that in the, the books I've read. So, I don't know. But then he goes on to tell me that they took a picture of the, 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 uh, 
the torso. So I'm sitting there thinking like, hold on, a, a picture of this exists somewhere. I want to see that picture. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of gruesome. I shouldn't be like, I want to see the picture of the... of the armed torso. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Um, but also the whole time he's telling the story... Oh, th and that's just the beginning of the story. He goes on to explain how it went uh, from from, I guess, over in the Pacific during the Pearl Harbor attack to uh, helping out during the D-Day invasion and then going back over to the Pacific for some other stuff. Um, helping out with, like, the Battle of Okinawa and shit, Iwo Jima. Um, uh, but, so yeah, and then it, the retirement of the ship and its involvement in... Oh, damn, atomic testing. Because uh, I guess they tried blowing it up with a couple of atom bombs. And it just didn't really want to die. So anyways. Uh, the whole time he's telling this story, and it's story after story after story after story of this entire ship's... I don't know what that would be called. Lifetime, consignment, whatever. Um... I kept waiting for him to involve himself in the story and be like, Oh, I was that photographer that that took the picture of the... Oh my goodness. Uh, that took the picture of the, the dead guy. Or, oh, I was, you know, the spotter on D-Day that was telling the gunners on the ship where to aim. Or, oh, I was, you know, this guy in, in this situation and here's how the ship was a part of my life. Never happened. Mike had nothing to do with the ship. He just really, really liked it. Uh, he did also, he did end up telling us kind of his involvement with uh, the atomic testing in Nevada, and that was that he worked at, I don't know, it was some like underground lab? It wasn't a lab though, it was um, like a storage facility. I guess they were doing research on how plutonium decays, I think. Um, and he was like a supervisor, inspector type deal. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Um, it's also worth noting, we're not entirely sure that Mike worked there. He did have a docent badge, uh, but it was separate from his picture ID that kind of hung around his neck. Also, both of these things, the, the picture ID card and the docent badge, uh, were definitely from the early 1980s. So we're not really sure that they even belonged to him. He very easily could have stolen them in 1984 and just kind of kept showing up at the, at the museum, telling people stories. It's also worth noting, I haven't done any of the research on the USS Nevada to confirm or uh, or disprove his stories. Um, so he might not work there. He could have been making it all up, and I wouldn't even be mad about that because we had a great time talking to him. He was so much fun. Oh, oh there we go. Um, yeah, he was a he was a fun guy to talk to, fun guy to chat with. That's pretty decent. Okay. Uh, is that a secret room? Sure is. Okay. We're gonna... Oh, I hate this one. Huh. Yeah, that's why. Oh, give me the health! Give me the health! Give me the health! Okay. Did I not get health? Do I have negative health because of spice? Oh, boy. That's not good. Or is it hiding behind... I got it, right? I picked it up. It said I picked it up. Yeah. But then I still only have the one heart container. Ooh, that's rough. That's a not a good thing. Um, so do I want to fight the rat? I, 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 I think probably not. Right? I think probably not. I, I, I'm tempted. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this. I'm going to buy Brick of Cash. I want that. That's a keeper. Oh, that's a terrible joke, sir. Bad, bad joke. Um, I still have a bunch of money, though. Oh, spice, that's expensive. Wow. I don't, I don't think I can reasonably do that. 
That just seems like a really bad idea, especially with as much curse as I have. Also, I haven't been paying attention to that. How do I not have the the Lord of the what the, what the hell is that guy called? The scary boy. Wow, I really can't think of his name. Lord of the Jammed? There we go. How is he not chasing me around? Um, so yeah. It was a... All in all, it was a good trip. We had a lot of fun. We... Oh my god. Uh, the... <laughs> so, sorry. I just remembered something. We saw Smash Mouth of all bands while we were out there. Um, now, it's not necessarily that we went to a Smash Mouth concert. We kind of walked by a Smash Mouth concert. Uh, they were having a free concert on just on Fremont Street, which is... Uh, I don't even know how to describe Fremont Street if you've never been. It's um, like a three, four, five block stretch, something like that of just stages and street performers and uh, little like vendors and then pretty much lined on both sides of the street are just open bars. Um, and then yeah, there's, there's a couple of stages set up throughout the way. And then there's also like food and stuff. Um, but yeah, one of the stages one night and they were advertising it pretty heavily. They were really trying to get some people out there. Uh, but yeah, Smash Mouth. And Danielle and I, when we walked by, it was about 15, 20 minutes after they had started. And they were right in the middle of playing All Star, right? And, and we were we were making all the jokes about how you know Danielle said she had just gotten these songs stuck out of you know out of her head uh, a couple years ago. Um, but we were making all the jokes about, like, how many times in their set, or in their concert, do you think they're going to play All-Star? You know, I, I was like, they only had two songs that I could think of. That was All-Star, and then, uh, uh, I'm a Believer, which isn't even an original. That's a, that's a cover from The Monkees, I think? I think the monkeys were the original recorders of that. I could be way off base there, but I'm pretty sure. Um, so I was joking that they might just play those two songs on loop over and over and over, and the fact that we saw them playing one of those two songs only made my case. <laughs> Do they have other songs? Maybe? Probably. But did those songs ever get any sort of attention. Not that I remember. In fact, we were hanging out somewhere else later that week, or a different time that week, and we heard a song playing, and Danielle said, wait, is this Smash Mouth? And then we listened for a second, and she said, no, no, I think that's Sugar Ray. And we're like, oh yeah, basically the same thing, though. Whatever. Still, like, didn't have any anything really going on. It's alright. And if you're a Smash Mouth or a Sugar Ray fan, okay, be mad at me. I, uh, I, 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 I don't know what to say about that. Be mad. <laughs> that, that's all I've got. Don't take me too seriously. I guess that's what I should say. It's all jokes. I said it for the lols. Pew! Good job, space friend. Okay. Uh, uranium amulet. Well, certainly not the best one. Like, I have Daruma. I can make some use of this. And I've got a ton of money. I'm gonna buy that. How much for coin crown? 63? That sounds like a good idea. Um, a key I might want to buy. I'm not real hurt up for keys right now. Is coin crown? Hold on. I probably... I... I think I have this confused. Is Coin Crown the one that... Play well, get money. Okay. So it gives you money. I wasn't sure if it was that one or if it was... Oh, I'm thinking of Gilded Bullets, I think. That makes you stronger based on how much money you've got. I think that's Gilded Bullets, right? 
Oh, bad. That was bad. Bad hit. I really need to be careful with my health. <laughs> uh, do I have anything in the bank? Nope. No backup. Okay. At least I've got a ton of extra damage from all this spice. So I've got that going for me, but holy moly, that's scary. Uh, yo, you shoot at me so I can Daruma. Thank you. I didn't want to try to jump over all of those crisscrossy ghost bullets. Um, I felt like I was better off just kind of dodging away from them, but the shotgun bullets are pretty easy to dodge. Oh boy. Yeah, Danielle and I, god, we had a great trip. We met some real characters in uh, in the elevators of our hotel. Um, because we, <laughs> we were in, I mean, it was a nice, it was still pretty nice, um, but definitely, like, the less fancy side of the hotel. They had a couple different towers. We were definitely in the normal people towers. Um, and I, I say that because we saw the fancy towers. We, uh, some of Danielle's family was staying in the fancy side of the hotel. And we went over to their rooms uh, a couple times. And so we saw the fancy side. The elevators were way nicer. The elevators on our side, by the end of that week, there were like three or four out of six elevators that we didn't really want to go into. A um, couple of times we thought we might die. Uh, there was one uh, we saw that was just stuck open, um, but the elevator was... What was that? Antibody? That might be nice. Well, actually, that's kind of useless to me now that I look at it. Um, there was one, but the, the elevator was stuck open. The door was open, right? Uh, but the elevator itself, the elevator car, was like maybe six inches up from where it should have been. So that's kind of unsettling. You don't really want to mess around with that. Um, but then, yeah, the elevators on the other side, way nicer. Way nicer. The doors would, like, warn you to watch for the, for the doors closing. Um, it, you know, when you got to your floors, like, have a nice day. Excuse me? Where was this? Where was all this on the other side? Instead, over there, we're just fighting for survival. Um, but the people that we met in the elevators, oh boy. That was a lot of fun. Uh, there was a couple that, oh boy, we were pretty sure was about to have a threesome with, uh, with the guy's best friend. That was fun. Uh, the guy's friend kept telling us that their safe word was mayonnaise. And then uh, we were like sitting in the lobby waiting for waiting for someone that we were meeting up with. Um, and they walked by, and the dude just looked over at us and was like, remember, the safe word is mayonnaise. So Danielle looks to the guy sitting next to us, totally unaware of the situation, and just says, oh, they're all about to have a threesome tonight. And then she's like, oh, it's not weird. We were in the elevator together. Dude just like, okay, I started laughing. Danielle started laughing. By the time we, like, stopped laughing and looked over, that guy had just left. He was waiting for someone. I don't think he found his people. I think he just was like, no, no, I'm out of here. These guys are weird. Okay, that was a little sketchy. Oh, boy. And then some guy walked up to me and was like, hey, man, I really like your beard. And he wanted to talk about my beard. And I was like, nah, I'm not feeling that. Uh, so I pointed him to some guy that had just walked by us and was like, nah, that guy has a good beard. Go talk to the guy with the ponytail. Go get ponytail. And, uh, I think I'd been drinking, which is why I had said it that way. Not that that's a great excuse, but it's an excuse. Um, I don't have any way to open that chest. That sucks. I probably don't need to use limited ammo. Um, but anyways, I'm like, yeah, go get ponytail, ponytail. And so the dude, like, just started running down the hallway towards where I was pointing, 
ran straight by the guy. Totally missed him. Um, but Danielle and I ended up going back up to our room for some reason right after that. I don't remember why. Maybe we forgot something. Um, maybe the people we were waiting for said they were going to be a little bit longer, so we went up to, I don't know, whatever. Um, and we get into the elevator, and I just started laughing, because all I could think about was just, from an outsider's perspective, all they see is me just pointing down the hallway of this hotel, yelling, ponytail, ponytail. <laughs> I'm laughing about it now. So I'm stuck in this elevator, and it was not just me and Danielle. There were three or four other people, so I'm trying to hold it together. I fail. I just start laughing to myself. And as soon as we get out of the elevator, because uh, it was just me and Danielle that got off on that floor, I just started laughing and laughing, and I'm... We kind of... Aw, oh, that was bad. We kind of start moving back towards our room, and I just, I lost it, and I just started laughing, going, ponytail, ponytail. And, uh, turns out, that guy was on our floor. So, as I'm sitting there laughing in the hallway, pointing down the hallway, mimicking what I was doing before, which was what was making me laugh in the first place, there's ponytail right down the hallway. Oh my god, by the time we got back to our room, I actually fell down on the floor and was just rolling around laughing, holding my sides. I... I had the best Vegas vacation I could have had. Good old time. And it really did... Oh my god, the, the scenery out there is just beautiful. And it's something that we saw the first time we were out there, um, but... We, ha we didn't really have a chance to drive around beyond, you know, beyond the streets. Um, if we went anywhere, we, like, took the bus or a cab or an Uber. Uh, but this time around, you know, we had a, we had a rental car for a few days. Uh, so we got to drive around and really see the city. And it was great. We, um, we didn't notice it before, but this time around we realized just how surrounded by mountains we were out there. And that's a big reason that Danielle really wanted to be there. Um, she loved the mountain view. And really, it was like we saw that there was a great mountain view from our hotel. Uh, what we didn't realize was that driving around, because Vegas is in this little valley, it's really like everywhere you look there's mountains, and unless you're on the strip and just surrounded by these gigantic buildings, you can see the mountains everywhere. It's amazing. Every street you turn down, like, every time there's a break between buildings, there they are. Just beautiful, beautiful mountain ranges. And, uh, so you kind of get a double benefit out there of being in, you know, having the scenery of these mountains, but being in the dryness of, in the heat of the desert. So it's just, I don't know, it, it was awesome. And then, uh, from our room, our room was facing west, um, so we're looking right at Red Rock Canyon, and, uh, and the sun, when the sun was setting, uh, we only got to, we were only in our rooms during sunset a couple of times. Um, but as the sun was setting, it was just gorgeous. You know, you see the, the sun just falling down behind these, these mountains, just illuminating them from behind. And uh, in the mornings, you know, the sun's coming up on the other side, so it's illuminating the, the mountain ridge on, on the other side of the valley as the sun was coming up over the mountains behind us. And it was just really cool. It was really cool to be there. Uh, okay. Hip holster is fantastic. Um, especially because I've got guns like Stinger. Oh, I didn't think about Metronome. Whoops, I really should have just used this on Helix because that's what I want it for anyways. I mean, these are about the same. I guess this needs a little bit more ammo. Um... I don't know. If I get another key, maybe I'll do the the guy. 
what am I doing here? Stinger, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, Stinger's gonna be great for boss fights now with Hip Holster. It was gonna be great anyways. But with Hip Holster, even more effective. Double the bees, double the fun. Uh, I do not want these jammed C4 dudes to get on me though. No thanks. There we go. I wanted to use Dharma at least once, maybe poison the guy. It didn't happen. Um, I think that's about it from our Vegas vacation that I really wanted to talk about. The gold gun? That's nutty. That's just nutty right there. Um, since our vacation, it's just been, you know, back to reality, back to work. Uh, we actually got a new intern at my tech job, so that's cool. Um, and he's, I don't know, he's pretty cool, nice guy. We've been getting along the last couple of days. Um, I'm not going to do anything with this, I don't think. I keep forgetting I have met him. keep cycling away from guns, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, so, can I afford a key? I don't think so. 35? Yeah, 35. So that means this chest is busted. Oh, hello. 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 That's perfect. Now, does that just drop money? No, it's only when I hit enemies with it. Damn, so I still can't get a key. Alright, well, I've got cash, at least. This is gonna set me up quite nicely with money for a minute here. But yeah, new do at work is kind of nice. It's, it's, at this point, like... It's kind of slowed down my pro my productivity, um, just because I'm training him, I guess. Uh, or at least showing him, you know, the expected procedures, um, at this place. And he's picking it up fine. He's doing a great job so far. Um, but there are certain projects that I'm working on that I'm having to slow down to help him out with. Figuring out, like, the retail side of it, um. And, you know, it took me a little while to figure it out, too, and get to a point of comfort. Um, but if he's going to be there when I'm not there and when the owner's not there, basically if he's going to be there by himself anytime, he needs to be able to do it. Uh, and he understands that. He's not put off by it. He, he's he got a great attitude, from what I can tell. Um, so I think it'll be nice. And it, once he gets into it, It'll be really helpful for me and for the owner, just to have an extra set of hands in there to uh, to help out and to help uh, the coverage of the store and and uh, some of the some of the projects that we're working on. We're about to go through a big name change, uh, rebranding, I guess. Um, hopefully, it will help increase business. That's the idea behind it. Nice, we got the arm sent up to the next floor. That was quite easy. Oh, we've got a mini boss over here, huh? I guess I could try this out. I've got Daruma, that should make this a lot easier. But yeah, hopefully those things work out. And then, basically I'm working hard at this job, because the owner has flat out told me if the store starts making more money, I'm going to start making more money. And that's something I'm very interested in. So, <laughs> I'm trying to make it well, make it all work out. And, you know, if she thinks someone's gonna, or if she wants to give someone a tryout for our team, absolutely. I'll give them a try, I'll, you know, I'll try to be a good mentor and all that good stuff. Oh, that's Lord of the Jammed. I don't know why I thought it was just one of those Gun Reaper dudes that shows up sometimes super late in a room. I don't know why I wasn't expecting him to pop out. But yeah, he absolutely should be here by now. I'm surprised I didn't have Lord of the Jammed earlier. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. What am I even doing? This is what I should be doing. I should have Golden Bombs rocking. Um, 
This is terrifying, and I hate it. Thanks. Oh boy. Oh boy. Please leave me alone. Okay, I don't have Daruma back up yet. Oh boy. Um, hmm. Did I make mistakes here? You know, probably. I'm thinking probably. Oh god. Ugh, ugh. Why? Why are there more enemies? Um, so yeah, I'm thinking I really messed up taking all that spice. If I'm trying to make it down to bullet hell, I don't know what I was thinking. Because the dragon fight is going to be rough. It, it's just going to be rough. Uh, it's probably going to be jammed, which does not make it any easier. Um, Lord of the Jammed is most certainly going to still be there. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, excuse me, what the hell are all these guys doing? Alright, I don't care about Metronome. I have to just survive. Uh... Oh boy. Um, also, I just realized I'm kind of locked out of shops now, with Lord of the Jam chasing me around. Or I at least have to run away, and then be very quick about my shopping. Uh, that's the other option, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm playing a real dangerous game, having no health, and all these jammed enemies around. It's not good. It's not good. Oh, muscle relaxant's pretty good. I like that. Uh, more spice. Let's go. Let's go. Run away. Oh my god. Oh my god. Open up. No, <laughs> let me through. Dude, come on. I just want to I just want to go this way. Let me out. I wanted to avoid that trap room. And also, you know, the, the Lord of the Jammed a little bit. So I teleported over, but apparently not far enough away. Oh, bummer. He got me. Well, that sucks. I, I mean, I recognized my mistake as soon as Lord of the Jammed showed up. Well, I think maybe even a little bit earlier, like when I went down to one heart. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe I did too much spice, huh? Man, look at that jammed spent, though, in the kill picture. That's kind of badass looking. But anyways, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and my tales of Las Vegasness. Um, there are so many guns in my inventory that I didn't even get a chance to use. Uh, I'm looking at Face Melter. I'm looking at the Golden Gun. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Oh, Mr. Accretion Jr. I think I used to spot a secret room once. But that's it. Um, but yeah, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. More importantly, though, and I mean it every time, I really, really do, be sure to have yourself a great day, and I hope to see you around later. Bye.